Life is all about the money game and whosoever plays it right wins. If you're poor, then you're losing in the money game. And if you're rich, you've most probably figured out how to play the money game. So just like any other game out there, the one with the best skills usually wins. Now, of course, luck has its role to play just like in any other game. And those who are lucky occasionally do get to win. But in the long run, the ones with the best skill and talent end up winning. You cannot continuously rely on luck to keep winning. Your luck certainly does run out. In order for you to become rich while playing the money game, you've got to become dominant. And dominance doesn't come with luck. Dominance requires you to harness your skills, talents, and ability for you to continuously be at the very top of your game. The first thing you need to understand is why you're playing the money game. So ask yourself, why are you playing the money game? Most of us on earth, if not all of us, are here playing the money game. The systems in the world are here to teach us how to play the money game. People go to school to get knowledge on how to play the money game. People learn skills and the goal is usually to utilize them to play the money game. So why are you playing the money game? Tell me in the comment section below. I mean, for every view on this video, I expect a comment on why you're playing the money game. Are you playing the money game to please your wife? Are you playing the money game to supply needs for your family? Are you playing the money game for fame? Or for you, it is simply for leisure and pleasure. Why are you playing the money game? It's going to play a very huge part when we do understand it later on in the video, but it's very important that you're honest with yourself right now before we go further into the video, reflect in your heart and understand why you're playing the money game. And when you do that, let me know in the comment section below just before we move on and let other people actually read your comments and you also read other people's comments for us to understand the wide variability as to why people actually play the money game. Now I'll tell you an interesting statistic that correlates why people play the money game and their financial position. Poor people usually play the money game in order to pay their bills and to feed their family. I mean, for them, if they can feed their family and pay their bills, they are sorted. That's what they are working towards. So if for you, that's your mindset, most likely you're going to end up poor. Now, the middle income people, the middle class of people usually play the money game, number one, to be comfortable. So they don't want to stress. They don't want to be the kind of person who has to go and beg for food. They want to be comfortable. They want to live in a nice house. They want to live in a nice place. They want to be comfortable. But also they want to have some extra money to spend on themselves. So the middle income people work, number one, to be comfortable, and number two, to have extra money to spend on themselves. Now, the rich people play the money game in order to be able to do whatever they want from wherever they want whenever they want without thinking about money that's crazy that's so different from the rest of the people they're not thinking about survival they are thinking about living the kind of life they want so why you play the money game has a very huge role to play in what you end up getting whether you're successful at it or not i mean it's just like any other game consider two teams that have come to play a soccer game one of the teams is coming from a really terrible neighborhood maybe the neighborhood has been torn by war in the past and they have simply just started getting back together and the neighborhood is really poor and for them if they won that game if they won that trophy it would mean that their community can then be recognized everyone will understand that the community exists but number two it will build some form of support and a strength and belief in themselves in people in that community for them to understand that they can win but number three it will also bring money in that community maybe people will start Start coming to visit that community maybe they will win money if they win they do have a purpose a goal as to why they are playing their game and then you'll also have another team the team that they are playing against and on that team the biggest percentage of people are playing the game simply to exercise i mean they are playing to work out i mean for them it's not about winning the trophy it's about exercising it's about working out they probably earn a lot of money and it's the weekend they're like whoa over the weekend we'll go and play a game those are two different teams that have two different reasons as to why they could want to win the game. The team that actually has a solid, strong reason is more likely to win the game than the team that simply goes outside there to exercise. So why you're playing the game is very important in ensuring whether you actually will or will not win the game. So I do believe that success 
expands to fill the boundaries that has been provided to it. Any person, as long as they believe and know that they can succeed, usually will succeed on what they set their eyes to. What they set their eyes to is usually the boundary of what they can do. So if they can only set their eyes on a mile, then they'll only be able to run a mile. But if they can set their eyes on being able to accomplish 10,000 kilometers, then they can do 10,000 kilometers. Everyone has the ability. So I do believe that you attract what you believe. You attract what you set your mind on. Now, unfortunately, a lot of people have utilized this line in a very wrong way. A lot of people just go on YouTube and simply watch motivational speakers telling them that they are able to do things and then they just remain in their bed. They don't do anything about it. All they do is wake up and be like, whoa, I can do this. I believe I'll be able to get rich. I believe I'll own a nice car and they even start confessing. But in all reality, they don't really believe it. You see, when you believe something, your belief in something drives you to do that thing. You see, if you look at the Christians that were murdered, you know, in the Roman Empire, they went and did things that they believed in, and that's why they were murdered. If they only believed and remained in their rooms, then the emperors would not have given a damn. But because they stepped out and did what they believed, they met a lot of resistance, a lot of them were killed. But again, a lot of them were able to succeed. They were able to spread Christianity all through the Roman Empire. So your belief in something causes you to do it. So if you believe that you can be rich, I believe that belief causes and gives you the drive and the ability to push yourself to step out of your comfort zone and actually go and do the things that you believe in. That's why it's very important that you have a positive mindset. So in summary, poor people are losing the money game. The middle income people are simply playing the money game. We shall say they are surviving in the money game. For them, they're not losing, they're not winning, but they're right there. But the rich people are winning the money game. They are acing the money game. They have figured out how to win the money game. Now, is it possible for you to actually win the money game without getting a pay slip? 100% it is possible. And this is what we're going to be talking about. How do you actually get to this point where you can win the money game without a pay slip? What you need to understand is that the biggest winners of the money game don't get pay slips. We don't need to invent anything new. You just need to look around and see what is actually happening and understand. So if you want to increase your chances of winning the money game, you need to understand that the chances are lower if you're getting a pay slip than someone who is not getting a pay slip. You need to be the one who is paying the pay slips in order for you to win the money game. So what are the things that we learn from the people who are continuously winning the money game for us to understand what we need to do in order for us to win the money game? Number one, which is what we've already talked about actually is that you've got to get a winner's mentality. There is what is called a winner's mentality. For you to ace anything, for you to win anything, you've got to believe that you can win. If you come out to play the game when you don't believe that you can win, what happens is that once you meet any form of resistance, number one, you give up. I mean, you'll just walk back, you'll be like, well, I expected it, I knew it. What was I even thinking to think that I can win? There is no way I was going to win. That's what happens if you meet any kind of resistance. But if you believe in your ability, to actually win the game, you will understand that this is simply a test, something that you actually simply have to walk over or fight against in order for you to reach the goal. So it's very important that you have the correct mindset for you to win the money game. Like I've already said, if you have the right mindset, it drives you to carry out the actions, to do the things that you're required to do in order to win the money game. Number two, you've got to offer value. Now, it's not like people who get pay slips don't offer value. On the contrary, the people who are paying those pay slips are paying for the value that that person is providing. So certainly 100%. It's possible and everyone who earns a pay slip usually gets the pay slip because they are offering value. But unfortunately, simply by definition, you earning a pay slip means that there is a ceiling on two things about you. Number one is your creativity. Your creativity is limited. You see, when someone is offering you a job for you to do for them, there is a list of things that you should be doing and there is a list of things that you shouldn't be doing. Of course, that is simply implied by the list of things you should be doing. So if you can only do this, that means you can't do everything else. What that means is that it has put a boundary on what you're able to do. And that means that the likelihood of people discovering you because of new things coming up, because of your your creativity, because of your talent, because of what you can offer that no one else can offer is decreased because you can't try out new things. I mean, there's zero creativity coming from you. But number two, 
there is a ceiling on how much money you can earn. You see, your boss, simply by giving you a list of things that you can do, has given you a list of things that you can't do. And by giving you a list of things that you can't do, simply means that there is a maximum amount of money that he is willing to pay. I mean, he won't pay you beyond that because he hasn't hired you to do everything. So, whilst you might be a very good worker and you offer a lot of value at your work, your value is only valued at something and nothing above that. I mean, your boss will not give you a million dollars every month simply because you're a very good worker. And that creates limits on what you can step out and do in the field for you to be appreciated, for you to bring the very best to your workplace. But not only to your workplace, it also creates a limit on your worth, what you're able to bring into yourself. So then if it's value, but not value at a workplace, then what can I do to ensure that I can win the money game? One, you can offer a good or a service what I'm talking about in brief is start a business. Now, of course, you're going to tell me that most businesses will fail, and that is true. But you can work on your ability to ensure that your business does not fail. Most people outside there simply start businesses because someone tells them that a business can make money. The biggest percentage of businesses outside there make losses. And why? Because people don't go into them with the goal, with the focus of ensuring that the business succeeds no matter what. People go outside there believing that simply because they have started a business, it's going to thrive. People go outside there believing that simply because they started a business course somewhere, their business is going to thrive. No, you've got to understand the dynamics of how to start, how to successfully run a business. I mean, I've made a video about how to start a business that can never fail. I'll leave a link to that video in the description below. If you can check it out, you will understand that making a business to succeed is both a science and an art and there are a lot of things entail to ensure that you get the very best results out of that business. So yes, a business is one of those things without a ceiling. I mean, there is no limit on what you can do, whether it's a service that you're providing or whether it's a good that you're providing. There is no limit. I mean, a hundred thousand, a million, a billion people could be willing and able to pay for whatever you're providing as long as it meets their need, as long as it provides value. The other thing that you can utilize though is get your talent and nurture it to ensure that it can bring the very best. I mean, it can get money for you. Usually, talent provides value for people. Now, it might not be value in form of bringing money into their pockets, but for example, the entertainment industry, I mean, if someone has worked and they are tired, they want to go and sit somewhere and rest and enjoy themselves. So can you be the one to offer them that enjoyment? For them, that is value. So what are some of the ways you can win the money game using your talent? Number one, sports. If you can utilize your sport ability, whether it's soccer, basketball, it doesn't matter what form of sport, then you can win the money game without earning a pay slip. Number two, join the entertainment industry, whether it's music, whether it's the movie industry, you can get a lot of money through these things. Now, unfortunately, there are very few people who can make it to the top using talent. I mean, utilizing talent simply means that you have to be among us the very best, but not only the very best you have to be lucky a lot of times be lucky i mean look at the number of people you know who have played football most likely you've also played football in your own life whether you're a woman or a man you play football or you've played some form of sport now how many people do you actually know physically in your life who have made it to the very top in terms of the sports arena the biggest percentage of you know no one who has made it to the top but as much as you know almost everyone you know has played a sport at one point in their life so those who make it to the top those who are earning a million dollars two million dollars are very very rare and it requires a lot of dedication a lot of discipline a lot of talent and sometimes a lot of luck to make it to the very top now the third thing that we can learn from people who have made it to the top is discipline and sacrifice i mean if you're starting out and you want to win the money game compared to a lot of the other people you've got to get disciplined this is one differentiating factor one that separates the average person from the top person usually the top person and the average person usually have the same skill set they have the same abilities but their difference is in terms of discipline if you're disciplined 
you put in the dedication, if you tell yourself that I'm going to be learning this skill, for example, playing the guitar, and I'm going to make sure that I master it, then you must be disciplined. If you tell yourself I'm going to dedicate two hours every day to it, then you need to make sure that you dedicate two hours to it every day. That will separate the master from the novice, from the amateur. The amount of time that you place in, the discipline to follow through, to ensure that you do the things that you've told yourself that you're going to do. That's what is going to ensure that you get to the very top and stay there. I mean, I've read and seen a lot of, for example, talented sports people, very, very talented. They're probably 19, 20 years of age, but they are so talented, but they never make it to the very top. Why? Because they didn't have the discipline. They had the talent, but because they didn't have the discipline, they were not able to sustain themselves at the top, and inevitably, they failed. But number two, sacrifice. You see, you've got to sacrifice. You've got to let go of some things in order for you to make it to the very top. The advantage with sacrifice is that usually it's only at the beginning. With time, things become easy. It's like a rolling stone. You see, winning the money game is like a rolling stone. It will start at the top of the hill and it will have little speed but as it rolls down the hill it gathers momentum and becomes too weak and stopping it becomes a problem very very difficult to stop it because it has gathered momentum so same thing with sacrifice at the beginning you have to sacrifice you have to put in a lot of effort you have to put in a lot of work you have to do as much as you can to ensure that you get to the very top but once you get to the top once you've figured out how to do things then the ball will just keep rolling to the bottom and there you have assured sacrifice now, once you've gotten to point number three, the fourth thing that you require to win the money game is called leverage. You see, leverage is simply then utilizing other people's abilities and skills to ensure that you earn money, to ensure that you remain at the top. This is when you start paying the pay slips. Yeah, you should be the one giving out the pay slips. You use other people's strength to make sure that you remain at the top. You see, it's impossible for you to do everything. It doesn't matter what you're doing. You cannot do everything. You've got to utilize other people's strengths. You've got to utilize other people's ability for you to remain at the top. The people who are winning the money game, a lot of times, many of them will simply work four hours a day, two hours a day, 30 minutes a day. What does that mean? That they even then utilize other people's time to remain at the top. I mean, there's only 24 hours a day. And if you're going to be exchanging your time for money, then you're never ever going to win the money game. It's impossible for you to win the money game if you're exchanging your time for money. So then you've got to make sure that you exchange other people's time for money. You've got to make sure that while you're sleeping, while you're resting, you're making money. So what do you do? You make sure that other people are making the money for you. And that means that you have to develop your ability to manage people. That means you have to understand how to leverage other people's skills and utilize them for yourself to get to the top, but also to remain at the top. Now, if you've enjoyed this video, I believe that this video right here about how to sacrifice just one year to ensure that you remain rich forever will be very helpful to you. Check it out. Trust me, you won't regret it. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button, smash the notification bell. That way you never miss out on an upload. Catch you very soon with another video. Lots of love. Bye-bye.